Okay. Uh, now we have mentioned that we can place Brahmos anywhere and uh, we can use it at any point of time. Can someone detect? Uh, Very difficult to detect. Very difficult. Very difficult. Why? Because a matty finish, you know, suppose mm -hmm. the missile is in a very ugly shape mm -hmm. and that it is canisterized. Mm -hmm. So even from satellite, if you want to uh, tamper it, circuit and all, mm -hmm. it is not so easy. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm telling again, the chemistry comes into being. Okay. The, there is a warhead in the middle of the missiles. We call it as in some middle portion. I don't want to say the exact location, okay. but I'm just telling you, it is in the middle portion, say. Okay. Suppose the enemy has come to know that there is a warhead there. Mm -hmm. And uh, through satellite, I can, sending the infrared signal, mm -hmm. I can blast this. Okay. Generally, like in James Bond films and all, you might be seeing from the satellite, the ray will come and okay. heat that area and yes. there will be a big blast. Yes, yes. That can happen. But uh, in my missile, it cannot happen. Why? Because that is the outer cover. There is an outer cover for that uh, warhead. That is called a wakmi. Wakmi is a rubber sheet type of a thing. Okay. But it's such a rubber sheet mm -hmm. that it will not allow any infrared signals to penetrate. Okay. So that signals cannot enter mm -hmm. your uh, warhead uh, zone. So suppose it is lying in the air and uh, through satellite I can try to tamper it. You cannot do anything. Okay. So th and uh, these are some latest technologies. Like that, you know, there is a lot of things. There is a, uh, for the missile itself, you know, the air intake. How much of air it is taking because it's an air breathing engine. Hmm. So air is a must. So the disadvantages of this missile also tell you it cannot go beyond some 12 kilometers from the above thing. Okay. So it will be a low flying. At the same time, air is required for its uh, moment. moment. Okay. So initially it is driven by a solid propellant that is called booster. Mm -hmm. Afterwards it is on the ramjet, the air what it is getting. Okay. So that is why it is called ramming. The air will be ramming at a high speed okay. and uh, the fuel will be burning. That is by liquid kerosene. Okay. So it gets carried with the air only. Mm -hmm. Not with the calculation, but the air pulls. The air will be entering from the front side and that will act like a force to push the missile more fast. Okay. So it will be in that uh, concept. Okay. And that will get ignited only if the missile is having that uh, 3 Mach. It achieves that 3 Mach speed. Okay. That will be given by the booster. Hmm. That is why when you see the missile slowly lifts off and then goes in a huge speed, then the booster detach, detach itself out. Okay. Then it is purely on the uh, liquid fuel. This is the uniqueness of this missile. There are so many missiles like this. Hmm. There are other missiles only on solid propellant. Hmm. That is also there. Like, you know, if you see the Korea and all, no? mm -hmm. they have the missiles purely made of uh, solid propellant only. Mm -hmm. So it goes at a huge speed. You can have, you can have hydrogen based uh, fuel also. Okay. But ours is, you know, a missile which is consuming less energy. That is means it's like kerosene. Mm. Based on kerosene, our missile is working means you can imagine how much of destruction it can do. Yeah. And uh, plus this fuel itself will add like uh, no, more fire in the around. Once the blast takes place in the target area, mm. the fuel spillage, whatever the excess fuel is there, mm. that will also get spilled and it will catch fire. So it is causing huge damage to the territorial area. Mm -hmm. So that way this missile is uh, unique by itself.